Alrighty folks, hi. Uh, coming at you live today. So as you can see here, I have a ton of plants. This is all for our upcoming succulent party in September. Um, I'm doing a bunch of different videos and needed some plants and Mountain Crest Gardens was kind enough to send me 90 plants. There's about 30 different varieties here. And I'm gonna do a little time lapse after this and show the process of getting these all potted because uh, once the plants arrive, it's best if you can repot them immediately or at least almost immediately. Um, so I got these on Friday. I got them all unboxed and um, they've just been sitting right here with these video lights that you can see uh, that kind of work as grow lights. They're not the best. But um, yeah, but I wanted to get them potted. So today's Monday. So that's kind of a three day window there for you. They shipped out, I think on Wednesday last week. And to start, I am going to plant up this pot, which I got on Amazon. And um, I will, um, I'll try and throw links for all of this stuff in the description once I'm done too. But um, a couple of you asked about combining succulents in an arrangement and how you deal with the roots. Um, so that's what I'm gonna show you with this pot. It actually ended up being a lot bigger than I thought. Some of these I was paying really close attention to whether they were like a three inch pot or I think some of these are five inches, this one's two inches. So I knew that I was going to be working with um, primarily two inch succulents. Mountain Crest also has a few varieties that they offer in. These look like four inch pots. Um, so I got a few bigger ones if they had bigger ones. And yeah, we're just going to put this together and see what happens. So the first thing I'm going to do is fill it up with soil. If I can find my soil. All right, so um, I'm also, you'll notice me using a bunch of tools. Most of them are from the mini toolkit that I recommend. Again, we can throw some links in and also scissors. I don't know if we'll need these or not. This particular pot came with a little drainage hole cover, which is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in. And actually I would probably wear a mask doing this inside. Even though Bonsai Jack soil is uh, pretty dust free, they work really hard to make sure it's just the particle sizes, there is still a little bit of dust. And this room does not get the best ventilation. Normally I'm planting outside and I don't feel like it's as big a deal. Um, okay, so I was trying to figure out what I wanna put in this. Um, I caught these aloes, which look awesome. They might even be a little big for that, but I wanted to combine some other plants. So I'm thinking to start with one of these Pearl from Nurnbergs. Um, I think the pinkish purple inside looks kind of cool with the pot. So over here I have a box where I'm just gonna dump all my soil and pots. And hopefully you can see, I'm just gonna, I'll talk and then do it. I'm gonna break up the soil, break up the root ball. Um, Mountain Crest soil is coconut coir with some pumice mixed in. And uh, of all the places that you buy succulents and all the soils that they come in, it's probably one of the better ones. But I still prefer it be in Jack's Gritty Mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and break up the root ball. And even if you're keeping this soil, you still wanna break up the root ball and make sure um, that the roots are nice and spread out. And then you can remove any uh, dead leaves that are on the bottom as well. So I'm gonna just gonna kind of massage it. And then I'm just rubbing my hand kind of along it. And if you are new to planting succulents, um, just know that you can break off the roots. So that was one of the questions in the Facebook group was like how to handle roots when you're planting close together. One way is to break them all off and do it more like a cutting, but you can also leave it on. Like you can see, there's not a ton of roots there and this is the first one, so it's gonna be easier. So I'm just gonna set it in. You'll notice I filled the pot most of the way with soil. I will probably add more um, as we go on. So I'm gonna actually move this up here with my scoop. Okay, so let's figure out what else we wanna put in. Let's just keep going colorful. We're gonna go with um, Sedum Nusbamaranium. Um, that's a word I have practiced a lot. Okay, and this one actually, it looks like it's 
basically some rooted cuttings. So that makes it really easy to work with. I'm just going to tuck those right in there. This is kind of moving a little much for my taste, so I'm going to go ahead and scoop some soil and put it over the back, which you can hopefully kind of see there. Um, just to kind of hold it in place. As we get more in, um, that'll just stay in better. So we've got that, and I'm not really going my traditional thriller filler spiller here. I'd say this is kind of the thriller. I'm going to try and, I want all of the leaves of the, of the succulents to be above the rim of the pot. That just helps prevent um, root rot and problems that way. Come on, dudes. Okay. Anyway, those will get stuck in later. Um, I'm going to do some Portilacaria Afra over here to kind of change up the texture and color. <clears throat> so as far as working with the roots, you're just going to, it's kind of easy, I guess, at the beginning because you can just really tuck them in. Um, the other thing that will come in handy I also sometimes like tuck the leaves around the leaves of the other ones. Okay. Go on with that. Um, the other thing that might come in handy are some like tweezers. And okay, so I have some bent tweezers or angled tweezers. Those are handy. And then these, this is designed for planting seeds. I can't remember what this is for, holding plants in place, but these will both kind of come in handy as you get closer. You can use it to kind of like poke the roots in between other plants. Do you know, I wonder if we put one of these Echeveria elegans in this too, just to kind of fill it up the space a little bit. Okay, this one is much more root bound. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so it's gonna take a little bit more massaging to get it out. And as you're doing this, I know I mentioned this earlier, but it is a really good idea to pull off any dead leaves or plant material that's underneath. It just helps the succulent stay healthier and make it less prone to rot or other problems like that. Okay, so this is going to help really keep things nice. <laughs> yeah, right. Nice and snug in there. So. Someone that I would follow, if you like the look of really tightly planted succulent arrangements, there's two people I would follow. One is um, Cindy Davison of the Succulent Perch. I believe she is just on Instagram and Facebook. Um, but that is like kind of her signature thing is like floral style succulent arrangements. Um, so she is really, really good at this. And I have not done it in a while, so you can see. Um, a little tricky there. Okay, those guys really don't want to stand. When I come in to do the top dressing, that will help a lot too. I feel like we need kind of another big one on this side to balance this out. So let's go with... I don't want to do another of the same... That's fun. There's just a Carl von Nuremberg leaf. In the group, you might see that as PVN or if you're on forums and stuff. Um, Pearl von Nuremberg. Let's do a topsy turvy. Here. Draw that in. So that's pretty nicely balanced. And then I need some stuff to fill in, obviously, on this side. So on the well, what is now the back, I have the sedum dusbamaranium. I have some portulacaria afra. I think I'm gonna do one more portulacaria afra over here. That is one that I love, love, love having on hand. It's also one that grows really well in Arizona. Um, 
you've been around for a while, you'll know that our pool house has Portulacaria afra in the front. And so in the fall, when they trimmed it, I just went over and I skimmed my hand along the top of the plants and there were all these cuttings that would have gotten thrown into the trash, I guess, or how, whatever they do with things that normally get cut off. But I gotta keep them instead. It was like $40 worth of plants. It's great. Um, okay, and then on this other side, I'm gonna do another rosette. I'm gonna do ghost plant. Graptopatellum paraguayans. This is a fun one. There's been a lot of talk about ghost plant in the group, Facebook group, and then it's one that I have been looking into a lot because it is very, very commonly uh, mislabeled or misidentified. And actually, um, no, I think these are. So there's another one that's Graptocetum ghosty that looks really, really similar. Okay, so I have that pretty well in place. I do not like that leaf. It does not want to come off, so I'm just going to cut it off. Go ahead and cut it. It's just kind of dying anyway. Okay, so now I have that filled in there. I think that's pretty good. For the sake of today, we are totally running with it. Um, I almost feel like it needs another elephant bush over here, but I don't want it to be so like matchy matchy. I don't know, I think we're just gonna leave it. Okay. And as this grows, I mean, it's already really full. And you don't have to plant them this close. You can spread them out, but that was just kind of what someone wanted to see or talk about was planting them close. So the biggest thing with root is um, starting from one area and moving over or starting from the center and working your way out. Excuse me. <coughs> okay. And then um, that way you kind of get all your roots in one place and you can kind of tuck them in nicely. But like I said, you could also use uh, this little tool to kind of poke things down or, you know, tweezers to kind of help you get them in there. Now, what I want to do is to finish it off, I want to put a top dressing on. One of the things that I really like about using a top dressing is that it helps set the roots in place. Because usually a top dressing, if you're using a rock, like some sort of decorative rock, which is what I'll be using, um, it's a little bit heavier. It's not a lot heavier than Bonsai Jack soil, but a little bit. And it just helps everything stay in place. You can kind of tuck it in, you can press it down, and just make sure everything is going to hold nice and tight. So for today's arrangement, I am going to use, I'm trying to figure out how to get this over here. I guess I'm done with soil. All right, I'm going to use, I believe this is called Gold Tan Top Dressing from Bonsai Jack. Um, Fun fact, if you buy two of them, you can get the second one half off. Um, there's a coupon code right on the page where it talks about, the page where you can buy the top dressing, it has a coupon code that you can use to get a second quart of this free, not free, half off, when you buy the first one. And then I'm just using a little scoop from my mini toolkit. The oh so helpful mini toolkit. If you don't have one, get one. They're like ten dollars or less, depending on what one you get. And it's super handy. You get these the scoop, the soil scoop I was using earlier, all these tweezers. Um, my set ah my set is really mismatched because I have probably ordered fifteen in the last few years because my kids really like using them. And then I also misplace things. So between myself and the children, we lose pieces and then find them later. And it's just nice to have a bunch. So sometimes I have them inside where I'm doing videos like today. Sometimes I have them outside in the garden, which is where I normally am working on stuff. So these fell out when I was pouring in the top dressing on the back side. But you can see now, 
that um, adding this top dressing is just going to help them stay in place because it will cover them up. Um, Cindy Davison, if you follow her, I think I only told you one person to follow. I just talked about C Cindy. Um, she uses a lot of moss sometimes, which can also be good. Um, depending on where you live, moss can be problematic because it retains too much water, so it can cause your succulents to get a little bit of stem rot. So just keep an eye out for that. Okay. Can I get stuff in there? That's the ultimate question. When I do smaller pots, actually this one would probably fit. Oh, look at that, it does. When I work with smaller pots like these, when I'm doing the top dressing, I actually put them in the bin. And that way, the top dressing just falls right back in. It's one of the reasons why I like storing top dressing in these bins. Okay, so you can see I'm putting the top dressing in. I'm kind of pushing it with my finger. This little guy also helps really well, or works really well. This guy really helps. Things come out funny when you're live. Um, and then the other thing that you can use too, which of course I don't have with me. Um, normally I will have a bunch of um, chopsticks. So when you order soil from Bonsai Jack, he includes a, top, a chopstick with every order. And those also come extremely handy. If you don't have this little guy from the toolkit, a chopstick works. Sometimes this is nice because it's a little bigger than a chopstick. Sometimes the chopstick's nice because it's a little bit narrower. Okay, I think. Pretty good. I really, really like the color of this pot. So it is ceramic, so it has kind of like a nice matte finish. I don't know if it's pink or red, kind of both. Pinkish red. So there you go. That is how I would pot succulents with roots all together in a big arrangement. And add top dressing and all of that. Um, Say one other thing. Okay, so with this, um, if you haven't already read or watched a planning tutorial I've done, I'm gonna let this sit for a day because those roots where I've been moving them around, they're damaged. So I usually let it sit for about a day before I water and then just make sure you're soaking it all the way through and waiting until it's completely dry before you water again. So that is our beautiful arrangement from today. And then because it's planted so tightly, this won't grow very much. So when you plant them close together, um, it kind of has a bonsai effect of sorts because the roots are so compacted in there that it won't grow a whole lot bigger. Um, whereas if you plant a succulent in a pot that's like just bigger than it, so like this, it is going to grow larger. You don't want to do it way bigger all by itself. Um, but you want to do it just larger. So I know that's a question people have sometimes. Um, and then you also don't have to pack arrangements this tight. Same as if you're planting an individual pot, individual succulent in an individual pot. Um, you want to give it about half an inch, no more than an inch of extra space, I would say. Um, with your arrangements, you can also spread them out a little bit too, because that will give them more space to grow. So if you want to keep it tight and tidy, then just plant them nice and close together. And then you can also limit your watering that way too, because if you're not watering as frequently, the plants are not going to grow as quickly or as much. So two ways to kind of think about that. Water more, plants grow more. If you water less, they will grow less and just rely on their stored water more. So there are your tips for succulents for today. And uh, stay tuned for the time lapse and then also for our succulent party coming up in September. And the awkward exit. <laughs>